Hey everyone, I'm Jack Fawcett, and today we are checking out a particularly elegant specimen from D'Angelico, the Deluxe 59. <laughs> So, the Deluxe 59. Now, according to the literature, this is based specifically on a model designed by John D'Angelico in 1959, hence the name. And this is just absolutely stunning, beautiful, great tone. This is 100% up my alley, this guitar. I, I'm really enjoying it. And I do want to say thank you to the folks at D'Angelico for sending this over. This is a sponsored review, and I'm just loving this guitar. They're not paying for me to say that or anything that's, you know, but this thing plays like a dream. It sounds glorious. Now, part of that is thanks to its Seymour Duncan pickups. This has two Seymour Duncan Great Dane P90s, and they have just the right P90 tone that you want from a vintage-inspired archtop. Right? They have this really sweet, biting, and kind of twangy top end with this sort of like pillowy warm mid-range and then just enough low end to kind of make it interesting and, and to fill up your sound. And when you combine that with the fact that it is a fully hollow body guitar, it just gets all the right tones for this type of guitar. Now this one is in a matte finish. This is a matte brown burst finish, which is very nicely done. I've been on record before saying that matte finishes, satin finishes, whatever you want, you know, whatever different specification they are, I'm very finicky about them because sometimes they just seem cheap. This one doesn't seem cheap. It just seems really nicely done. One of the things that I like about it is it doesn't get all kinds of fingerprints. It doesn't reflect light in awkward ways. And also it's just really comfortable to play. You know, the matte finish never gets gummy on your hands. This one has a C profile neck with an ebony fingerboard, mother of pearl inlays. And then it has all the uh, accoutrements that you would expect from a high-end D'Angelico. Regarding the headstock, it's got the super ornate fancy headstock, of course the tailpiece, and it's really, really lovely. Now, this one is a shallower body. I was expecting, you know, more like a big kind of acoustic depth body. Well, Jack, didn't you read the specs and everything? No, I just saw something pretty and I said, hey, I like that one. So that's kind of cool because it makes it a little bit more comfortable. Um, even one of the things that I found is when I've played with it out in a band setting so far, it... Its feedback is controllable and more musical than other fully hollow body guitars that I've had. Now, where the guitar feeds back makes a big difference as far as whether or not it's you know something that you can really work with. Some guitars get that high-end shrieky kind of feedback. Some of them get the low feedback where you actually feel like your guitar is going to like explode in your hands. This one gets this kind of like nice mid-range swell to it when it starts feeding back. Now it obviously it's a fully hollow body guitar so if you start using it with a lot of drive yeah it will feed back but again it was controllable and it kind of hit frequencies that actually just sounded cool and ones that you almost wanted to to then like incorporate into your playing. I thought that that was a big selling feature because for me, 
especially with fully hollow body guitars, one of my big concerns is how am I going to handle the feedback? You know, if I'm playing with some drive, if I'm in a club that's not really suited for a guitar like that, you know, this one is kind of as good as I could hope it to be in that regard. Now you've got a chicken head selector knob for the pickup switch, which I thought is kind of cool. That's a little bit different than, you know, what you typically see nowadays. And you've got a volume and a tone knob. So it's very, very basic and straightforward when it comes to controls. And that makes it a very straightforward playing. It's very, very comfortable to hold. It's not too big and cumbersome. It's it's just big enough that you get that, you know, great big arch top vibe to it. But again, with the shallower body and, you know, the comfortable neck and the matte finish, it just feels really great to kind of have over your shoulder and everything. Now, you've just heard it in a jam. I'm going to give you a full tonal profile of this guitar now on the neck middle setting and bridge setting. We're going to do both clean and overdriven. Today, I'm going into the Supro Royale. And for the overdriven tones, I'm using a Keeley Super Fat Mod. So please let us know, what do you think of this guitar? Have you played any of the high-end D'Angelico guitars? I have the XL SS Tour. Many of you have seen my review of that and seen me use that in other videos, and that one's great as well. This one is definitely just a, a step up. It's a really... Again, elegant is just the word that comes to mind. It's a, it's a nice guitar, but the cool thing about it is it, it also has just the right amount of attitude where I'm not afraid to rock out a little bit with it. You know, it doesn't seem like you just need to relegate it for use in jazz or something like that. So let us know what you think. I'm Jack Fawcett. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the video.
Yeah.